Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about solving trigonometric equations. So let's finally uh, start by solving these things. So uh, to start off, let's start off with something very basic. So let's say we want to solve. So let's say we had sine of x is equal to one half. Okay, so let's say I only wanted uh, the values that are only in the unit circle. So from zero to two pi. Okay, so this basically means I just want it where it completes one full period. I want to know where exactly is the sine of x equal to one half. Well, one way that you can do is just take inverse sine and then just look at the calculator. But remember, the calculator has restrictions, so you will only get one answer. So you would have to go back to the unit circle and try to figure out where exactly that is. So when we look at the, the unit circle, we're trying to figure out what exactly is a sign, uh, what angles give you a sign of one half. So if I go to the unit circle, we can see that the sign is one half right here and also right here. So that's it. So it's only at pi over six and at five pi over six. Okay, so x in this case will be at pi over six and at five pi over six. So that's gonna be my solutions. Uh, now, the thing is, sometimes uh, you might want to consider all solutions because we know that sine doesn't only look like this, right? We know that it continues on, okay? So it continues with this wave pattern, okay, both in the positive and negative direction. So usually, if I were to ask you for all solutions, then basically what I'm doing is that if I look at the unit circle, um, and if I start at pi over 6, I'm gonna, if, if I want to get the next one, well, I would just add 2 pi to get to the, next per, to the next point. I would continue adding 2 pi, which is a period, continue, continue. Same thing with this guy. I would continuously add 2 pi until I get all the solutions. So the way that we write it is the following way. We say x is equal to, so we'll start off with pi over 6. So it's going to be pi over 6, and we're going to add 2 pi. But no, we're not just going to add 2 pi, we're going to also add a k. Because k is going to be a factor, so for if I wanted to figure out what the solution is 2 periods from now, then k would be 2, so it will be at 4 pi. So if I wanted it to be 2 periods back, then k would be negative 2, uh, negative 2, and then I would go back to negative 4 pi. And then we would also write 5 pi over 6 and do the same thing add 2 pi k. And here, we're not done yet. What we're going to write is k is an integer. And basically, an integer, remember, it's a positive or a negative number. So kind of like negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, continues, right? So you have two options. You can either write k is an integer, okay, just by that, like that, or you can write k lives in the integer world, okay? So this k it's just k. This one you, is basically, uh, you can write lives. That's basically what it means, lives, or is an element. And then z is just a fancy notation for saying the integers. Okay, so all the world of the integers are live right there. So you can write either k is an integer if you just want to be like that, or if you want to be a little more fancy, you can write this guy right here. Okay? All right, so now uh, these are very, very basic because if, they're in the, if they are in the unit circle, then it's very, very easy to see. Now with tangent, it's going to be a little difficult because uh, with tangent, remember that if you want to figure out what the tangent of, I don't know, a negative 1 is, well, the tangent of negative 1, we have to be extra careful with this because uh, for 1, it doesn't have a period of of 2 pi. It has a period of pi. So instead of adding plus pi, 2 pi k, we're going to add plus pi k. Okay, that's going to be for tangent and cotangent. Okay, not only that, but tangent is not visible in the unit circle. So if you look at the unit circle, you can't quite do it. So one thing that I actually would suggest um, would be, since we know that the, that the tangent is just equal to the sine over the cosine, then one of the things that you can do is just literally kind of have a third point here. So here if I divide 1 half by square root of 3, you're going to get 1 over square root of 3, which is going to be square root of 3 over 3. This guy's just going to give me a 1, this guy's going to give me square root of 3, uh, and then obviously this one's going to give me a 0. And then you can complete everything else. So this is going to be negative square root of 3, 
negative 1, uh, negative square root of 3 over 3. And this guy is going to be uh, negative, oh, no, positive square root of 3 over 3, 1 square root of 3. And on this side, it just kind of alternates negative square root of 3, negative 1, negative square root of 3 over 3. And then you can see that here is the asymptote. So this guy is undefined. It's undefined here. And then here we're going to get a 0. So you can kind of draw in the unit circle and draw a third point to just kind of denote the tangent of that. So this will be uh, basically how you would be able to find the tangent very easily. So now if I go back and if I say what is the tangent of x equals, uh, where is the tangent equal to negative 1? Well, uh, if I wanted just the interval from 0 to 2 pi, it'll be really easy because all I have to do is locate wherever that guy is negative 1. So if I look at the unit circle, uh, you can see that that occurs uh, here, which is 3 pi over 4, and here, which is at 7 pi over 4. So it'll be at 3 pi over 4 and at 7 pi over 4. So that's where that guy is, will be that. If I ask you for all solutions, well, there's two ways that you can write it. So you can write 3 pi over 4 plus pi k, right, because we know that the period is pi, and then write 7 pi over 4 plus pi k. And here, obviously, k is an integer. Uh, the thing about writing this is that it's repetitive. So these two guys will be repetitive. They repeat. Uh, because if you see 3 pi over 4, if I add pi, well, I'm now at 7 pi over 4. And if I add pi, then I'm back. You know, so it's kind of redundant to write down both of them. So an alternate solution would also be saying 3 pi over 4 plus pi k. And here k is an integer. So this would be also really good to just write. It'll actually be a little bit better. Um, so that way you don't have the repetitions. Now if you want to have the repetitions, that's fine. But I think at this point, you probably should be aware of the repetitions. Uh, so just um, if you can write it in a very condensed way like this, it will be a little bit easier to, to do. Okay, so finally, let's do one more um, one more of the basics. Um, and that's when something is not in the unit circle. So what happens if something is not in the unit circle? So let's say you had a sine of 3 fourths. Oops, that's wrong. <laughs> sine of theta equals 3 fourths. And right now you want theta to just be uh, from 0 to 2 pi. So we only want it in that interval. So how do I solve for this? Well, clearly 3 fourths is not on the unit circle. Okay, So you can see that it's not there. Um, so instead, this when something's not in the unit circle, you want to be able to tap into your calculator. So go into your calculator, switch it to radians. Okay? And then in that case, what we're going to do is take the inverse sine. So the calculator here is where it's going to be a little bit helpful. So we're going to write sine inverse of 3 fourths. And that's going to give me 0 0.848. Okay, so that is one solution. However, we know that there's another solution because if I do all students take calculus, we know that the first one is going to be here in this quadrant, in quadrant 1, but I know that sine is also going to have a positive 3 fourths in this side as well. Okay, so we already figured out this angle. This angle right here is going to be 0.848 radians. Okay, so how do I find out what this guy is? What is this, this guy? Okay, well, we can use a little bit of geometry and symmetry. We can see that this guy right here, if this is 0.848, this guy should be 0.848 as well. Okay, so how do I get the blue one? Well, if I do a little bit of geometry, you can see that this guy is pi. If I take pi radians, which is all of this, and I subtract this orange part, I'm gonna get this blue part left over. So that's what I'm gonna do. So my other angle, is going to be equal to pi minus 0.848. So I'm going to take pi minus 0.848, and that's going to give me 2.294. So those are my two solutions. Okay, so nothing too uh, 
um, a little bit confusing because you have to do a little bit of geometry, okay? Um, now, let's say I wanted all solutions. All right, if I wanted all solutions, then the first angle would be 0 0.848 plus 2 pi k, and my other one will be 2.294 plus 2 pi k, okay? And then this will be k is an integer. I'm just going to write theta, not theta 1. Um, now, again, if you had, uh, let's say if I wanted it in degrees, then in degrees, um, let's say we had the answer was 30 degrees, and the other one was maybe, I don't know, let's see, make it a little bit nice, 150. So let's say these two guys were 150 degrees and 30 degrees. How would I write all solutions? Well, instead of 2 pi, 2 pi is 360. So it'll be 360k and then 360k. So just in case uh, they ask for you in degrees, this is what it will be looking like, okay? So this is in radians, an example for radians, and an example for degrees. Okay, so we did kind of a little bit of the basics. So now let's let's start off with doing some of the some of the problems, and then we'll do something a little bit more complicated. So uh, let's start off with this problem. So we want to solve uh, for all values for no let's say for solutions from 0 to 2 pi okay <clears throat> so let's start off with sine of theta uh, or let's write a 2 here is equal to 1 so let's say we have something like that negative 1 all right, so what you want to be able to do is isolate the, the, the sine function. So we're going to divide by 2 first. So you're going to get sine of theta is equal to negative 1 half. Okay, and now what you want to do is you want to figure out where exactly is the sine of theta going to be equal to negative 1 half. Okay, so now uh, we're going to look at the unit circle because I know negative 1 half is there. So we're going to look at all values where it's going to be negative one half. So I have a whole bunch of written stuff in here. So where is this going to be negative one half? So it's going to be negative one half uh, right here. That's a seven pi over six, and here at eleven pi over six. So there's going to be seven pi over six and eleven pi over six. Okay, that will be my solution. All right, what about if I said uh, secant squared x is equal to 4? <clears throat> All right, so now first let's get rid of that square. So we're going to square root both sides. And that's going to give me plus or minus. So I get secant of x equals plus or minus 2. Now the secant is, I don't like working with secant, so I'd rather just write, uh, write it as cosine. So this is going to be 1 over cosine of x equals plus or minus 2. I'm going to move the cosine over, and you're going to get 1 is equal to plus or minus 2 cosine of x. Then I can divide this by plus or minus 2, and you get that the cosine of x equals plus or minus 1 half. So now i got to think of all the angles of cosine where I get plus or minus uh, 1 half. I'm going to look at the unit circle. Face this. So where is the cosine equal to positive and negative one half? So here's one, here is one, here's another one, and here's the other one. So at those angles, that will be pi over three, two pi over three, four pi over three, and five pi over three. Okay, so pi over three, two pi over three, four pi over three, and then five pi over three. So those are all of my angles, okay? <clears throat> all right, now let's do something that's a little tricky, okay? So let's say we want to find uh, 2 cosine of 3 theta equals 1, okay? So this one is tricky because 
stuff happens whenever there's numbers in here. So when you have something in the inside, you really have to take this with care. Um, so even though we want all the solutions from zero to two pi, we're going to solve it for all solutions. So we're gonna first solve for all solutions. And the reason why is because sometimes if I just take all the solutions from zero to two pi, um, what will happen is that I will not end up getting everything. You uh, Sometimes because this, the period is continuously alternating, so now you have three times as much. So you're gonna have a couple solutions that you might end up missing, okay? So you wanna solve for all solutions first, and then you wanna iterate through each one until one of them lies outside zero to two pi, okay? So that's what we're gonna do. So it's gonna be a little tedious, okay? So we're gonna first start off with two cosine three theta is equal to one. So first let's try to isolate the cosine. So we're gonna divide by the two. So you're gonna get cosine of three theta is equal to one half. All right, so don't worry about the three just yet. We're gonna take cosine inverse, so we're gonna figure out where are all my values equal one half. So I'm gonna leave this, so when, I, when I'm looking through the unit circle, I leave th three theta by itself. So now I'm gonna take the cosine inverse of one half, so I'm gonna look at all the values where it's positive one half. Okay, so all the values in which cosine is positive one half is here and here. So that's a pi over three and five pi over three. So that's gonna be a pi over three and at five pi over three. Now remember that what we're gonna add is we're gonna add two pi k. And obviously k here is an integer. Okay, so now now we're not done with theta because now we gotta get rid of that three. So I'm gonna divide by three to every single one of them. So now I end up getting theta is equal to pi over nine plus two pi k over three, and then five pi over nine plus two pi k over three. All right, so these are basically my answers, okay? So if I were to just not have done this, I would have said, oh, pi over nine and five pi over nine are my answers, okay? Which, it, which you might have forgotten a couple of them. Now, pi over nine and pi, pi over nine are probably the answers, but there might be a little bit more. So what we gotta do is now think about it. So uh, we have now the interval from zero to two pi. Now, if you put two pi into your calculator, because uh, sometimes it might be better to work with a decimal, it's about 6.28, okay? So when we put them in, in, in the calculator, we wanna make sure that they don't exceed 6.28 and they're not below zero. So what we're going to do first is we're going to start off with my first solution, which is this guy. So pi over 9 plus 2 pi k over 3. And we're just going to iterate this. So first we're going to start off with k equals 0. So when k equals 0, clearly this guy goes away and I'm left with pi over 9. Pi over 9 is clearly in this interval, so that's going to be a solution. So let me write down the solutions over here. So let's say here, theta is pi over 9, so that's one of them. Okay. Now, let me plug in a negative number. So what happens when I plug in a negative number? You're going to get pi over 9 plus 2 pi times negative 1 over 3. Okay, so what happens when I put that in my calculator? So I'm going to have pi over 9 uh, minus 2 pi over 3. Okay, well, I ended up getting a negative number. Now, remember, I don't want negative numbers. I, the lowest number that it can be is 0. So this one doesn't work. So I don't have to go anything below negative 1. Now, let me go up. So k equals 1. So when I put in k equals 1, I'm going to get pi over 9 plus 2 pi over 3 times 1, which is just that. So when I do that, I'm going to get pi over 9 plus 2 pi over 3. That's going to give me 7 pi over 9. Okay, if I put that as a decimal, it's going to give me 2.4. Uh, so it's still in the interval. So this guy is a solution. Okay, so we would have missed that if we would have just said that pi over 9 and 5 pi over 9 were the solutions. Okay, so that one's a solution. Now let's do it for k equals 2, so the next integer. So I'm going to have pi over 9 
plus 2 pi over 3 times 2. That's going to give me pi over 9 plus 4 pi over 3. So what is that going to give me? So pi over 9 plus 4 pi over 3. And what I end up getting is 13 pi over 9. And if I put that as a decimal, I end up getting uh, 4.54. So that's one is also a solution. So this is 13 pi over 9. Good. All right, so let me go to the next one. So let's say I said k equals 3. Is k equals 3 going to give me a solution? Well, let's see. So k equals 3, uh, you're going to get pi over 9 plus 2 pi over 3 times 3. I'm going to get pi over 9 plus the 3's are going to cancel out, so I'm going to add 2 pi here. So I have pi over 9 plus 2 pi. Notice that now I got 19 pi over 9, and clearly that guy is way exceeds 6.63. So this guy exceeds it, so we're done there. So these are the only three solutions that I ended up getting for this guy. Now we have to do the other one, okay? So now we're going to do uh, 5 pi over 9 plus 2 pi k over 3. So uh, you can clearly see that um, the k equals 0 is going to be a solution. So 5 pi over 9 is clearly a solution. So that one's good. Um, I can go ahead and try out um, uh, doing a negative one. Okay, So if I do a negative one, I'm going to get 5 pi over 9 minus 2 pi over 3. But you know that that's going to give me a negative. So I'm not even going to try k equals negative 1. Okay, So that one's clearly not going to give me an answer. So I'm going to go to k equals 1. So I'm going to have 5 pi over 9 plus 2 pi over 3 times 1. Okay. So when I do that, um, what am I going to get? So I'm going to get 11 pi over 9. Okay, so that one, if I look at the decimal form, it's 3.83. So that one is the solution. So 11 pi over 9. And then I'm going to try k equals 2. That's going to give me 5 pi over 9. Plus, this is going to be 4 pi over 3. So I'm going to have 5 pi over 9 plus 4 pi over 3. That's going to give me 17 pi over 9. Okay. And then uh, clearly that's 5.93, so this one's still also a solution. And then when k equals 3, I'm going to have 5 pi over 9 plus 2 pi. Clearly this is going to be one revolution. This one's not going to give me an answer. So these are all my solutions from 0 to 2 pi. It'll be pi over 9, 7 pi over 9, 13 pi over 9, 5 pi over 9, 11 pi over 9, and then 17 pi over 9. So super tedious. You're only going to do that if only you have something inside of the argument, a number inside of the argument. If you can try to use some identities to get rid of that so you don't have to work through all of this, you can do that. Uh, but other than that, this is how you would have to do each individual problem for when you have this case.